You, you, you are now tuned into How We Do It Radio with Ms. Mindful Jordan, keeping you in touch with what's real and hot every How We Do It Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, let's see here. Okay, so we're going to jump into our interview because our guest is already here. Um, just give her a brief introduction. We don't want to keep her on hold too long. Um, and we definitely wanted to give a shout out to Blog Talk Radio for making for choosing us as their staff pick uh, for um, this interview. So shout out to uh, Blog Talk Radio for that, for sure. Um, our guest tonight is violinist Judy Kang. Um, after years of touring with acts from French composer Pierre Boulez to Portugal, the Man, I have to ask her about this. The man to Lady Gaga, violinist Judy King, has now released her own music, her own music to the world. Judy has achieved international fame as a violinist and has been featured in several major media outlets, such as NPR, CBS, CBS News, uh, and New York Times. Judy? Hey. Hey. How are you? <laughs> I am pretty good on this How We Do It Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us this, tonight. We are so excited. <laughs> oh, same here. Thank you so much. I'm excited, too. Absolutely. Uh, we um, actually, did, you know, try to do an in-depth, um, you know, a background with you. And I'm telling you, 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 I'm just, you, have, you are very creative. And oh. uh, you have a your your history, your music history is just so extensive, Judy. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're 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 music lovers here on How We Do It Radio. We're sort of a um, you know a, we talk about a host of topics: social activism. We thrive on that nonprofit, entrepreneurship and entertainment as well. Uh, so we definitely have a music background as well. So it was very interesting and, um, you know, very um, informative to research you. I'm like, wow, she is just so talented. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice to, to hear that, and, and it's great to be on on your show as far as um, just hearing about um, the type of programming you do as well. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really cool. Appreciate yeah. it. No problem. I just wanted to, um, you know, to definitely give you like a little background on us. Uh, so, how have you been doing? How was your day today? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was it was really good. Yeah, really good. Of, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are you in Are really, you in New York? I am right now. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was rain. It was rainy yeah. today. It was raining earlier, but then uh, I was rehearsing actually, and um, and then I come out and it's like sunny, so it really like it, it clear. Was, like, yeah. It so yeah, it changed my mood. Like, yeah. wait, wait. <laughs> you know what? So funny. I kind of enjoy, like, I, I enjoyed it a little bit. I'm like, oh, wow, it's all nice and gloomy and rainy, yeah. relax. Yeah. You know, it just put me into this, like, relaxing. It is relaxing. It yeah, is. Right. You're right. There's something that, like, is a bit more, like, calm about the city when it's sort of just, like, raining a little bit. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you're, you're right. It's like a little bit of a, a nice change. For sure. Exactly, because <laughs> we've had beautiful weather over the last, um, you know, yeah. like last week, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, right. That's weather. right. It oh was. my gosh, it was so yeah. gorgeous. I was hot, so it I was had like actually hot. Yeah. I had a, <laughs> like absolutely wonderful weekend. I was like, oh, I had a gorgeous week. Well, <laughs> I'm so like trying to that. trying to wind it down, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, okay. So um, I wanted to. Um, I know from your background, from the research that I have um, done, that you are from Canada. You're a Canadian. You're from Canada, Canadian. I am Canadian. Yes, I'm still Canadian citizen, but I live in the states. Um, I've been in New York for um, yeah a long time now, several years, and um, since I've been in school. So um, yeah, um, but I am Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us um, when when. Um, did you start playing, and um, why, um, you know, when did you start playing um, the violin, and how did um, your passion for, um, your passion for being a violinist continue after that? Why um, did you start, and how, you know, and when? Yes, well, well I uh, started when I was four, four years old, and uh, my mom and my grandmother had a lot to do with me actually starting. Um, as far as before I was born, um, my mom, she uh, 
she told me the story that um, when I was, uh, I guess when she was in, in the hospital and um, the night before I was born, uh, my grandmother, she was, I guess she was sleeping and she had a dream and she um, told her mom that um, she saw a baby girl holding a violin. Wow. So, so that was... Uh, That's amazing. Yes. That, it was, it's a cool story for sure, and um, I definitely, um, you know, I, w- I had interest. Uh, I, I was showing interest, I guess I can say, um, since I was, you know, toddler, I guess. My mom had music on all the time. She loved music herself. Mm-hmm. And um, unfortunately, she didn't have the opportunity to right. play. I think she wanted to. Um, so I think it was just um, kind of, you know, our whole family just loved music and was inclined to, to listen to it. And um, so I, when I was younger, um, my mom told me that she also saw me um, focusing or, like, dancing to, to classical music in particular. And uh-huh. um, so she she thought, you know, well, since that dream, you know, plus, you know, just something that um, she, I guess, wanted to see mm-hmm. if I would, I would be interested in, in, you know, playing. And at the time, I was kind of... Um, when I was four years old, I was in preschool, I guess. So um, she was looking for a teacher and um, in the city, and uh, she f- found this, um, first off uh, this um, man who he a concertmaster of the, the symphony there. Wow. And I think um, now, she what, had, now was that here in the states? That was actually in Canada. That was in, in okay, Canada. Canada. Alberta. All right. Because all so, the only reason um, why, why I ask because your your native is Korean background, correct? Right. Yes. Correct. Well, you were born in the states. Um, I was born in Canada. As well. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. yes. So I've been there um, the first eleven years of my life. Wow. And then I moved to the states at that point. So I mean, right. I've been here ever since. Yeah, I, you know, I keep forgetting well, Canada and the states are separate. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Sorry, it's like so Kenny. similar, it's like so close that it's like... I know, and I, and I actually want to go, so I've, I've never been to Canada. I've heard so many great things oh, about it. Oh, you need to go. You yeah, to I've, to I've heard it. It's yeah. really, really cool. Like, you know, it's it just, I heard it's totally different from the States, so I definitely want definitely want to um, go and visit. Yeah, it's great. You need to go, mm-hmm. especially the West Coast is really beautiful. Like really? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, so, yeah. So I just um, I was there when I um, I was in Canada when I was I mean, first start, um, started you know violin lessons. So um, okay. yeah, so I yeah, you know, wow. Because that I saw a video of you. Oh my gosh, playing like you were like a little something. <laughs> I have a I have a, I have a seven year old daughter, and okay. you know, and I can't wait till she like she's uh, in second grade now. And I definitely want to put an instrument in her hands because I I have a music background as well. I mean, you know, I, I love music. I love to sing. I used to sing as well. And I always feel the kids should um, have, um, you know, an instrument. Definitely be, um, you know, um, have that discipline. I played the flute, and I definitely would love for her to play, like, an instrument, maybe even, like, you know, a viola or uh, mm-hmm. something of, of that nature. So I think it's absolutely wonderful. I love the arts. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Definitely, I feel blessed to be a part of uh, doing what I do and, uh, and part of the arts community. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yeah. can you can you, can you remember the first time that the first time you learned? Was it from the um, the man that you said your mom had uh, taken you to the? Um... Um, well, it was actually um, my first lesson with him. Um, I think he intimidated me. Was uh, basically what happened. Um, I think I was, you know, I was just used to being around. Uh, my mom, my grandma, my aunt, a lot of females, um, and I think it was just kind of like, whoa, like, who's this big, tall, like, guy that, um, he's very nice, but I think I was kind of shy, and yeah. and so I think my, my, I think he um, suggested that I find, um, he actually helped find uh, another uh, violin teacher in the city, and um, she was actually a teacher of the Suzuki method, and so and she was very good with um Starting, you know, um, sending young. out young mm-hmm. kids, and um, and she was very nurturing, like a mother. So, right, um, I, I ha- yeah. So I studied with her for the first three, four years, and then I eventually went back to that um, that man. That <laughs> he, man. He his name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds funny. 
Um, so yeah, his name is James Keen, and um, he is uh, he was uh, my teacher for the next three years of my life in Edmonton, and then I um, before I moved to Philadelphia. And um, but both of my first teachers uh, were so amazing, and I I mean they were just more than teachers. They really um, helped me along, like you know, just kind of looking over. Um, I don't know. Just I didn't feel like they were just teaching me music. Teaching. It was just like having yeah. a, a, another dad and or yeah. having like another mom. Of, of course, it, of it was course. really like that. So because you're so because at that time you're so young. So it is like right. a um another um like a, a figure, uh, parent yeah. figure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Definitely. Um, could, what is this um Suzuki method? I want to know. <laughs> oh okay. Well, it's a method um basically created by um, a man in Japan, and his um, last name is Suzuki, and he uh, basically, um, it's like a traditional method that he um, started, and it's um, helping people who, like I guess, of any age really, but anyone who's just beginning lessons, um, to find a way to um, help them learn without having them to like have to read music or to learn in a certain way Uh that Right. And kind of hinder them from, I guess, learning to say they they learn by imitation right or by copying or by playing along with the teacher, and you just listen um, to the melodies. And it and a lot of them it starts with big classes, so you're you're not just it's not one on one. But I started one on one. It was private from the start, but they teach it in schools, and it's like a hundred students all playing at once type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's um, it, I, I I liked um, that. Um, I guess, I mean, it was very natural for me. I can't really say I can compare it to anything else because it's what I started with. But it was uh, something that I believe helped me to, I think, play in a very natural way as far as yeah. like, listening, listening to people or, you know, being able to kind of react and things like yeah. that. Yeah, your, your, your ear is spectacular, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sure. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's it sharpened. It's definitely, you know, over the years has sharpen me um, to listen to, I don't know, just different types of music, too, so. Can you actually, because uh, you are, um, a, a, you said you have produced and you um, have you, you write your own music as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I've been writing my own music, um, I guess, yeah, creating, recording a little bit um, for a while now, um, and I wanted to release an album at some point but it's something that I felt like it was just a big project yeah. that I was kind of intimidated by just to kind of follow, follow through with it. Um, I wrote songs here and there but I, nothing that I wanted to share with people. It was more like my own something for my own enjoyment mm-hmm. and expression. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I definitely um, at this point feel more like confident I guess I can say at least with um just being able to have a mindset of there's not, you know, a right or wrong way. Whereas before I was like, okay, I'm not a composer. I've never learned how to compose. Right. And I never considered myself a producer. I was just a violinist. Um, and I, as much as I like created things, I never felt like it was something that was worth, you know, other people hearing. But now I feel like it's not even like that. I feel all those things, but it's just like I'm at a place in my life as a person where I just feel like it's time something that I, I want to share and it's if time. people connect with it, great. Mm-hmm. If not... And it, it's, it's definitely it's time because um, and it's so funny because I'm thinking of this song I listen to your music um, listen to your music and there's a song I cannot think of the name, I'm so sorry uh, um, oh, I'm going to play it play it later on um, oh gosh, it's, I know I have Genesis okay, I, have, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I have Genesis Yes, Strawberry Dream, mm-hmm. You, um, Have you. Everything, is, everything is Pink, is that the one you need? Yes, oh my gosh, I love that. That's, that well, track is hot, Judy. <laughs> nice, I, well that's that's awesome to hear. It is really <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> hot, I love it. It has like a little hip hop feel to it. You oh, know, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, it has like a little, like a little beat to it, but it's like, it's classy, you know, it's like a little beat and it's, it's, you know, I love it. I can't yeah, wait to yeah. play it. Every, everything is pink. 
And and, and is that off of the self entitled album that was released in March? Yes. It's oh, yes. okay. All righty. Oh, great. I have to definitely get that, get that album. I'm going to play it later on, you guys, for the listening audience. Everything is pink. I absolutely love it. So um, so you were talking about your family. You said you're, you're, so you have siblings, and oh, you said most of them are musical as well? Uh, well, I actually, I'm an only child. Um, oh. I'm a, okay. I'm a, yeah, I'm an only child, but I have two older cousins that are like sisters to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up with them. Um, and uh, they learned a little bit of music, but um, not to the point of, you know, continuing on. But um, I'm pretty much the only musician in the family, I guess you can say. Hmm. Okay. Does uh-huh. is that is that lonely? Does it feel like you know, I'm not like not really? Because you said your mom actually had a love for um, the for violence. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I think everyone in my family definitely has an appreciation for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's a big influence to me because, I mean, obviously if my mom wasn't listening to music or didn't want, you know, didn't put me in music, then I would not be, like, it's just like that. Maybe eventually I would have found it, but I wouldn't be where I am. So, um, and my cousins listen to music all the time and they love new movies and just anything that's entertainment related. So uh, there was a lot of, you know, just, stuff around me that I, that I was exposed to. Yeah, I read um, that. Like your I know the yeah. New York Times article, they said that uh you know, the, you have you you've listened to all kinds of music from um, you know, from hip hop to classical right. to yeah, pop. Yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Everything, everything that um is out there and and I like to also um you know, try to find stuff that's probably not you know, um, easy to find, but, you know, I'm always looking for something that is like a hidden gem and right. is interesting. And, um, cause I always feel like those are the, that's what inspires me a lot is, is to hear, um, something that's a little bit off the beaten path. And absolutely. And I, like, um, and I like hope, mine. I hope, yeah, I hope so. Because we, you know, we need, we need, <laughs> You know, we need that. We definitely need that in the music, you know, music today. I mean, we just need something. I'm serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I know you know what, what you're I'm saying. saying. You. So it's yeah. just like, look, you know, that's like down. I, listen, I'm a hip hop head. I grew up in the 80s as well. So, yeah. you know, I'm straight hip hop. You know, I grew up mm-hmm. on Madonna. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. all of that right. Stuff. Yeah, and we we love them. Like I love them, and you love. I'm sure you know. We we all. It's just like it's nice to kind of balance that off with something that's kind of need a balance. You know, new or you know whatever it is, or or even just the old stuff that's undiscovered, and it's just kind of it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. To find but, that. So I was saying, like with R and B music, like you know, we're, mm-hmm. there's really no R and B music no more. Like R and B is oh. like you know, it's like there, there's like an R and B movement. That okay, um, yeah. um, that they're calling an R&B movement to bring R&B back, rhythm and blues. You know, with all the great okay. R, um, R&B, you know, like a Tyrese. Right, right. You know, like a I, Tyrese. Yes. How, what happened? How about yes. Sade? I love Sade. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's legendary. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and, true. And the classics. Like, right, and she like leaves and like come back like six years later. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like, where does she go? But she always comes back, and I'm, I'm expecting that to happen again. So hopefully okay. that happens. Okay, she goes back. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so I know that you have here. Uh, let's um, go into the um, – I know it says, like I said earlier, you were exposed to all kinds of music from um, from an early age. Um, and, of course, you, you have really, like, you some of your high um, – well, I see some of your high notes as far as your bio go, performing for um, Bill for the president at one point. Bill mm-hmm. Clinton. Wow. Yeah. How was yeah, that? That was, that was really actually very, that was very cool because it was an event. Um, it was like a fundraising event. And um, Magic Johnson was actually hosting it. And so I got to meet him and it was really just like a, you know, one of these like New York, like you really feel like you're, doing a New York thing, you know what I mean, like, right. you're seeing all these celebrities, you know, and so I was actually, I was playing, and um, it was funny because, um, like, I was, I started playing, and he, he kind of came in, like, at the very beginning of when I started playing, so he, he walked in, and, and then um, people started clapping, and so I'm like, okay, all right, um, and I'm like, okay, I, I'm not 
really done yet, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, of course, I'm just I'm being sarcastic. But I was just kind of like right. looking around, like, okay, what's going on? There's obviously something's happening. So I looked <laughs> out, and while I was playing, and um, Bill Clinton walks in, uh, and he uh, and so people are clapping at, to him, and then so he sits down, and I'm looking at him as he's walking in, and he just kind of like he's smiling and gives me that, you know, the look. Like you yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> So it's yeah, like, I so I'm just yeah. like, oh, okay, this is really okay. him, and it's really happening. He's here, and and so like I finish the piece, and then like um, I, I you know I bow, and then he stands up, and he's like bravo, and it's just like that's yeah, be, so cool because he's like, a musician, <laughs> because he's a musician as well, you're right? right? I think he plays you're the right. saxophone. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. pretty good too. He played he played right. the saxophone. That's right. At, uh, yeah. At one point, yep. He was he yeah. he loved he loved blue blues music. If yes. I can remember yeah. correctly, so he yeah. definitely um, was. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can tell he's like he appreciates music and he appreciates people, and you know, he's just such a he has that charisma, and it was like kind of uh, right. I could see it kind of like as soon as he was when I saw him, it was like you know, there's something about you know about him, and um, you know, it's just it, it was cool to kind of experience. That, that. Of course, that's like a really highlight, like, you know, with any any career. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, that's just absolutely crazy. And of course, um, I wanted to say that, um, as far as the, as far as, far as the music industry today, what are some of your, um, your influences and what, are, you know, what are your feelings on the, the music industry today? Because you are, this is not your first album, correct? It's not my first album. It, it's my first self-titled where self-entitled. I wrote all the music. I re- wrote and recorded it, but, um, as far as a lot of classical albums. I've done a few in the past, um, a few classical albums with uh, violin concerto, Sibelius violin concerto, some recital pieces, mm-hmm. um, like a, some chamber music. Um, so, but this is, yeah. Can you, can you, can you explain to, for the music lovers out there, and I'm a music lover, what is chamber music? Because I was doing mm-hmm. research and I kept saying, what is chamber? What is okay, that? But cham- yeah, chamber music is um, music that you collaborate with with more than one person. So if it's you and another person, that's chamber music. If, if it's you plus two, plus three, you know, just... Oh, I thought, that was, I thought that was a collab <laughs> It's a collab it is. It's a collab But um, I guess the reason why, and I, okay, I, may, I might be kind of wrong about this, but I feel like um, the reason why they called it that at the time um, when it was being performed, it was in a room that was kind of like, chamber like a chamber room I could be wrong um but it's like like it, it was sort of connected to something that like the place the type of venue it was performed in like the the group or like the music and um it's, it's referred a lot to classical music okay. so today like I when I play um with I guess non-classical artists I yeah for some reason I call it a collabo when I could be calling it the same thing. I mean, it's pretty much the wow. same thing. If I'm collaborating, yeah. I'm, you know, it's yeah. like we're doing something, to, like we're playing together as one, and that's what chamber music is. Is playing. Similar, similar, I'm thinking, like to like a session. Yeah, like a like a like a set, you know, or like you have the drummer, you know, you just like, hey, let's have a jam, a session jam. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we do have those. We like I'll Love them. have yeah. like chamber music parties. We call them, and we just mm-hmm. go to someone's apartment or whatever and we hang wow. out mm-hmm. and um read together and play and um and then jam and people like we kind of can rotate and listen to each other and things like that so it's like a yeah the same sort of thing yeah mm-hmm. so um it says of uh, uh you were a member of the acoustic trio um of academy award winning composer and pioneer of electronic music pioneer which really caught yeah. my um, eye when it says pioneer of electronic music Kiyuchi Sakamoto. Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I, yeah, I, I went on tour with him um, last year and this past year in Europe and in Asia, and he, we played his music. We did he's some awesome. of his. Mm-hmm. Are you? I oh, said he sounds um, awesome. Mm-hmm. Yes. He, I mean, I don't know if you got a chance to listen to any of his music. I would definitely recommend um, listening wow. to. His music is very special. Uh, it, as far as uh, it puts you in a 
in a mood, you know, puts you, it, it kind of changes the atmosphere of wherever you are. And I think that's what he, um, like his concept is a lot wow. to do with that. Um, when he plays, when we play um, in a hall, um, he, he uses reverb and special types of mm -hmm. um, sound quality mm -hmm. that changes. It's very subtle, but it, it's like it creates some sort of ambiance. And it's very... Um, Therapeutic in a way. A lot of times oh, when I'm I need it, that. Very, yeah, yeah. Like seriously, when you're like ever like feeling stressed like, out, you had yeah. a long day or something, mm -hmm. put his music on. It's really, um, and it's very ethereal and and kind of very spiritual in a sense. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Wow. Okay. So because it says he's the pioneer of a of electronic music. Mm-hmm. And wow. yeah, that was. That's what he did back, um, you know, um, I mean, he's still doing a lot of electronic music, but he did a lot of dance music, and he was, you know, kind of a rock star. Um, he's hot. Still there, but he definitely wow. was um, one of the, the hot kind of new artists of yeah. his time, and um, he um, basically was his influence to um, a lot of electronic, electronic music today, a lot of artists. Mm. Um, like craft work and um, a lot of um, similar artists that are, you know, doing a lot of the type of music he, he writes now. Um, he's kind of this inspiration and mentor to, to a lot of younger artists. So, right. Um, so, um, this, um, and, I, and I'm definitely going to check him out for sure because I love, uh, you know, um, I love all genres of music. You know, and mm -hmm. you know, and like I mean, from what you, the way you're describing, I'm like, wow, um, I definitely yeah. need that. Um, so, let's get to your your experience, your um, influences. Who are your influences? What CDs do you have right now? Who are your favorite musicians, groups? Uh, well, I always feel like um, it's interesting because I, I love listening to a lot of different artists, um, mainstream, top forty. Um, I love anything that's on the radio. Um, also, you know, um, the stuff that's not on the radio. And uh, like James Blake right now is getting big. He's like someone that I've been, like mm -hmm. his album has been on repeat on my iPod. Um, and um, who else? Like, um, I, I mean, I just, I like a lot of um, <laughs> variety. Yeah. I to people, like I like to w listen to two songs of an artist and then like go to another artist and so right yeah. I mean I listen to Pink Floyd and then like I, I do the shuffle so I have like Pink Floyd and the next song is um like Zeppelin and then like the Beatles and then it's like um you know Pharrell I knew you like, I was gonna ask you about I was gonna ask you about him <laughs> I was waiting. I was gonna oh, really? ask you that. because I listened to another interview you did, and um, you were saying that you possibly may like people that you may want to work with in yeah. the future, and you had mentioned um Pharrell. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. for years he, he I've been does. really into him. Like just yeah, something in his the sound that he produces, it's like it's Genius. all like it's so distinct, and it's like okay, I, that's definitely him, and and like that's the type of artist I want to be is like where you can kind of find that sound that's yours and mm -hmm. then you can make like you can work with other artists and incorporate or any that. artist pretty much and that's that he always seems like he can work with any even hardcore you know rappers yes. pretty much you know what i'm saying and he can yeah, like, and, yeah. work with them and still have that class to it you know what i mean and have like right. a class a classiness to it as well mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah he exactly. Pharrell, Pharrell is straight dope They're definitely mm -hmm. um uh, um, straight dope. So, okay, so of course we have to ask the question. <laughs> and I know you, you know, um, Lady Gaga, how was it working <laughs> with Miss Diva? <laughs> Lady Gaga herself, uh, she's a household name right now. And I, I didn't even know that she was actually from where, I, where I'm from, Westchester County, New York. Um, yeah, she's, yeah, from New, New York. Uh, she's New York. Um, yeah, um, New York bred, and that's who she is, and I, that's what I, I think I love about her is that she's who she is. And, you know, I, I believe she's a, a really wonderful artist, and uh, it was, 
an incredible experience as far as um, just being a part of her. Um, I guess she was just like you know really make like at her peak, you know, and so it was just kind of cool to be a part of that whole journey with her and her fans mm-hmm. and meeting them, and it's like this whole movement that she's yeah yeah still creating it, and she's she's yes. definitely more than just a singer and more than just a, a musician an artist um so it's this larger larger than life figure that um really has you know a lot of influence so um it, it was just a really big um and like i guess yeah i just i, I take away from the experience not just being a part of the show and the music, but mm-hmm. it's kind of this whole um, soul searching kind of like everything, you know. Wow. So it was it was great, and I, I mean I, I've definitely come out learning, having learned a lot more, and learned more about myself, and mm. um and it's, yeah. That's awesome. That's, and I think you know when we talk about music, and you know I've worked in the music industry as well, um, and you know um, as musicians like yourself and like uh, Miss Miss Lady Gaga. And everyone else, you know, it's just a love of music. So everyone gets so caught up in the, you know, in the biz, like, you know, the business part and the image part of it and everything like that, mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's so cool when you really meet an artist, you know, and I have you meet an artist and, you know, you really get to know them yeah. um, <clears throat> for, like, you know, truly who they are without the machine, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think we all, like, what happens too is, like, we tend to gravitate towards each other. You know, like, I feel like I, it's like I was really appreciative of what she does and who she, you know, like, kind of made herself be um, before working with her. And it's like I saw these connections as far as the type of things that visually that we, you know, I I don't know. I just feel like when I, um, I saw the creative, you know, um, image that she has. And her vision, it, it was sort of like, wow, yeah. I mean, I could really relate to it because there's a lot of so she's um, she's very creative similarities. I mean, yes, yes. And I think that's the big thing. Being creative was a big part of who I am too. So I think I could really connect on and, that and, level. And, 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 I, and I wanted to say that to you because I when I was um, reading your um, another part of your bio. I, you said something, and it really struck something in me, and I was like, wow, because I'm a creative as well. And you said, I was created to create. Mm-hmm. And I was well, like, wow, I, mean, I love yeah. that. I absolutely love that. <laughs> and I never Great. even looked at it like that. Like, I love to create as well. And I'm like, I was created to create. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. like, wow. I mean, I believe that's it. I mean, it's. It, I believe it to be true. I mean, um you know, I, I don't think that's a, it's an accident that people are trying to, you know, make always, you know, even if you don't think that you're a creator, I feel like everyone does it to a certain extent without even realizing it maybe. You know, like we make up things, we um, just the ideas that we have every day are things that are created. So I feel like in small or big ways, we all are, and it's just, it's tapping into that or, you know, if you have the interest in developing that part of you. But, I, yeah, I mean, I, I believe that. I believe be that as well. And when I read this, like, I was created to create, I was like, wow, because I'm that type of person where I'm always creating. Like, it's always just, I, I can never just be like Joe, like, I won't say Joe Schmo, but I like <laughs> all these ideas, you know, and, you know, um, mm-hmm. how can I make something better? You know, right, uh, right. You know, it's just uh, really cool. that, yeah. It's just that natural create. It almost like you know, with your fam, like your family, they're just like, can't you just do something normal? <laughs> <laughs> right. Can't you you just know what I mean? Like, it's just like, let's yeah, just be yeah. normal. Don't make do life too hard for yourself. Yeah. You know, you know what, like, what are you trying to create now? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> and I think, and I awesome. think, I think we're lonely. Like creatives are kind of lonely. Like, you know, yeah, sometimes. Was, like, I'm finding that it's it's this longing within us. Like, that's the word I was getting the other day. I was walking um, with my dog, and I was like, what is this feeling that's coming over me? And I was like, you know, it's it's this constant longing. Like, there's always this desire that's not quite met, and you find it, you fo- try to find that in something. Like, if you know, you try to fulfill it 
whether it's through, you know, whatever it is you, you do that you enjoy or through people or through, you know, your hobbies or interests, whatever it is. And so I think for me it's like that um, desire to, uh, and like that, yeah, that just kind of like this constant like, okay, one thing's done, but there's something else. You know, there's another thing. And it's not it's not like obsessive, but it's kind of like, you know, it's just you're I, never quite I satisfied. It's always for like there's something like there's just something more that you it's just something more. Like I think it's almost like a destiny. Like like when I look at your yeah. background, yeah. that's why like mm-hmm. I so like am inspired by you because I just like wow, like you know, you're you're young and you know, you've just accomplished so much. Um well. you have really accomplished a lot. Um, you know, so I mean I'm just it's just a, a huge inspiration and that leads me into the um my question about you being coming being a mentor an artist for the uh young um young audiences. It's mm-hmm. the, they say it's the uh nation's largest non profit in arts and yes. education. Mhm. Well I, I was working with them before I started touring more. Um it was um you know, just whenever our schedule works out I would um uh, work with them and um it's the nation's largest non profit organization for arts uh, for the arts and in schools and it's basically bringing um, different types of artists into schools to um, just, you know, just perform and connect with the students and, you know, just kind of a, it's like you're you're just in front of them. So that's like the best, that's the best way to connect with uh, with them directly. And so it, it really brings you to a place of like one-on-one with um, a lot of different um, aspiring artists or you know, just the kids who appreciate music or don't know anything about it, um, and you see how, like, the impact of it. I found um, kids like you, you know, um, are the most um, just simple. Not, yeah. I wouldn't say simple, but like it's almost yeah. like uh, very pure, and um, their reactions are very honest. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the best type of. Um, it's it's very satisfying when I see the enthusiasm of mm-hmm. a of a child. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, the sparkle or the like, the curiosity in their eyes. Um, and I and think, and I think now, like you know, with so much, um, you know, with them taking arts out of school, mm-hmm. and you know that there's not there's not a huge emphasis like when I was coming up on um, like it, like when I was coming up, we had to have an instrument. Like I, you right. know, like I said, I played mm-hmm. the flute for a little while. Mm-hmm. And everything, so it was more of a, it was more art in school, and you know more um you know it was just more artistic, it was more of an artistic platform um when when I was uh coming up, you know, and today I don't really see that and i I know there's a lot of nonprofit uh organizations out there um who push for you know to keep music in school um yes. keep music in school because i was, you know I come from a working class family um in a working class neighborhood, and mm-hmm. you know um a lot of times music was an music was an escape for me. It was an right. escape, right. Judy. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. singing was an escape. It was sitting in front of us, you know, and listen and write down <laughs> lyrics and, and you know, yeah, and that, right, you know, right. Yeah. Mhm. I you I know? hear you on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely if anything music is like the power of music is it's um there's no question. I mean, it's No question. You know, sometimes, you know, it's we take it to a point where it's like it needs to be like um, you know if you're a musician the goal is to be uh, a famous artist or you know just but but I feel like this it's not you know it's not even about that you know as as I become um, as I'm like you know getting older and I just realize the you know how music has um, impacted my life mm-hmm. it, it really is in, at the end of the day like it's a separate thing from like the career aspect of it. It's knowing that, like, I have it here. You know, I might not have a career tomorrow, but I have what I can give right. and what I what is given me. Yeah. You know, it's like that's that's at yeah. the end of the day there. So I feel like, you know, um, for any child um, who's exposed to it, it's it's just like the impact is there, and uh, we take it for granted for sure. And I think that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it is important. It definitely is. It's it's very important. You know, and I, you know, today, I mean, um, 
you know, um, because that's why I think it's so important as far as like the when we talk about the atmosphere of the music industry, um, yeah. you know, because um, it is it's, it is influential. I mean, it just yeah. is. I mean, you just the can't. Culture. It changes the culture. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, look yeah, what's going media. on today. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, growing up like with the young girls, and I mean, it is just yeah, like right. mind boggling. And then you add yeah. the internet, mm-hmm. add the internet in. Oh. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, it, it could be it's a positive, you know, it's a positive thing, you know, as long as you have like, you know, any musician, um, artist that may want to get into the music industry, you know, um, they just have to have a really strong foundation. Um, yes. to, um, you'd like to said to be able to do that, and um, which leads me to the next question. Um, what would you like, you know, for any musician out there who may want to get into the music industry, for even for some of our audience, um, our listeners who may have, uh, you know, want to become a violinist, who, um, uh, what would you, what kind of advice would you give them um, from your experiences? Yeah, well, I mean, my experience is definitely um, it's different. Yeah. It has like it helps me to put things into perspective because of the direction I took. If I just went straight classical, which I started with, um, my perspective would probably be very different. But I I would say because of that, um, in um, just where I'm at right now, there's nothing wrong with um, you know even if you've studied classical music all your life and feel like you know, oh my gosh, I've done this all my life, I have to continue on and stick with it. And it's kind of like, well, if that's your passion, if that's the kind of music you want to play, great. You know, just, um, I would say, um, you know, that if that's your dream, follow it. But um, don't feel like, um, especially in today's day and age, that you have to do just uh, whatever was traditional, like whatever the person before you did or the generations before you we're living in a very different time yeah. as far as um, things are just rapidly changing because of technology yeah. and and just uh, the the culture is it's becoming so um, diverse. Before, I think it was very separate. It still kind of is, but I think that uh, with the exposure that we have to everything, there's nothing that we can't. Right. Um, like right. Kind of avoid. And, it, and, and kind is of that a, and is that a good thing? So you have to ask yourself that. Is that a good thing or yeah. could that be a bad thing? That's, I mean, to be overexposed. Some, yeah. Know? Right. Right. That is the, the question. Right. It's like, what is too much and how much is not censored? What is, what should we censor? Or what should not be censored? And right. Um, I think it's just that is a question that everyone has to answer for themselves. Oh. You know, at mm-hmm. the end of the day. But I definitely believe in. Um, you know, you have to, as an artist, it's all about being free and, you know, like that's the big thing, like freedom and um, being, um, not being, you know, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> limited, limited to like what you're exposed to and not being like narrow-minded and all this stuff. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like, um, you know, I, I believe that um, there is good influence and bad influence and that's something that you have personally have to decide on for yourself. I mean, I think that's not the kind of question people want to, that's not the kind of answer people want to hear because it's like they want the answer. Oh, what is it? But you know, what, it's what's kind the of key? Like, yeah. What is the key? Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I have my opinions and I definitely, um, on the same, same page, I can say, I can kind of contradict myself because I love, like, um, you know, I, I don't tend to, you know, um, there's certain kinds of, um, you know, maybe music that I might not listen to because it just puts me in a certain mood that's mood. Not, yeah. not not comfortable or something, right? But then but then on the other hand I can listen to like just to give an example, like Marilyn Manson. Like I'm I i do not really <laughs> listen to his stuff, but I could listen to something of that the type of music people, and, and not the beautiful feel people. <laughs> yes, the beautiful, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I nothing against <laughs> Marilyn Manson, but I mean just to give like a very obvious example of like something that you know, maybe, you know, people can stereotype as, like, dark, you know, yeah. music that you should stay away from. But at the same time, you can get, as uh, you know, musicians can get, or people can get a lot of um, release from listening to that it's sometimes. Self, like, you it's, know? Like, it's like inner self-reflection. Like, when you know, when, you know, when we talk about that, I think of uh, Kurt Cobain. Yeah, I think of Kurt Cobain. Yeah. I mean, that's like, a great example. <laughs> like, artists Better like example. him where, you know, you yeah. talk about all this pain in society. Um yeah. 
you know, the Jimi Hendrix. You had Bob Marley. Yeah. Bob Marley. Yeah, there's a lot. Many, we need many that. Artists. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, I think we need it, and at the same time, um, you know, it, it gets to the, like it gets to the point where like, where is that line for everyone? And that's where everyone is going to be different. You know. Well, I my, think, well, my you know, thing is, I was going to ask you, like, um, as far as like, you're, uh, are you independent? You're you're considered an independent artist. Yes. Okay, indeed. so you're indie. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and with which everyone like today is like like indie is like you know um, you know is you know is really what is it's funny because I just read an article not too long ago where it says in 20 years record labels will actually be no more. That's mm-hmm. a prediction. That, yeah, because, it seems like it's going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because of the speed of uh, technology and everyone mm-hmm. um, online promoting themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and everything. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of independent artists that come here and come on the show. And uh, mm-hmm. we actually had an independent um, business that we had started up a promotion them independent um, a promotional business for independent artists as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and everything. So that you know it's pretty 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 cool. Yeah. Uh, this, oh my gosh, this interview has been absolutely awesome. Yeah. And I I just want to where are you going to be performing at? Are, in, Please let us know because I would love to come to one of your shows. Oh yes, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'll let you know. I mean, I, I definitely have some shows planned uh, for the next couple months um, downtown in New York, so I'll, I'll uh, keep you updated on that. I think definitely in this fall I have um, some shows planned out, so I'm trying to just do my album, um, continue promoting it. So okay, yeah. all righty, okay. So uh, let's see. And okay, so the um, self-titled album of Miss Judy King, you guys, um, was released in March 2013, and you can find it on um, yeah, on online, all iTunes, <laughs> all over, pretty much online, and then um, yeah. my website. Also, you can go through my website, and uh, yeah, it's definitely. Um, now, Judy, I hate to ask you this. I I really hate to ask you this. Um, but can is it possible that you could play something really quick? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> She's like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I love I, to and hear I'm just you gonna play. grab my violin and. Awesome, you guys. Okay, so uh, just a second, I'm gonna grab my instrument. Okay, I'll no problem. Right. Okay. Okay, guys, so Judy's going to get her violin, and she's going to play something exclusive for us. This is going to be awesome. And then we're going to get into her tracks that we have here. Her Everything is Pink is awesome. And we definitely have um, a, another track by her called You and another track called Genesis off of her new self um, and self-entitled album. All right. So I'm here, and okay. I'll just I'll just play a little bit. Awesome. 
<laughs> Thank you, Judy, so much for showing us love and coming on How We Do It Radio. I so much appreciate it. Yeah, same here. Thanks so much. It was fun talking. It absolutely was. It really was. And um, uh, you guys, you can find, definitely go to um, your website, uh, Um mm-hmm. to find everything you need about Miss Judy. And we're going to get into your track, Everything is Pink. We're going to play Genesis, and we're going to play you. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, and God bless. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, bye-bye. Bye. So awesome. She's so wonderful. All right, you guys, so we're going to jump into this track by Ms. Judy Kang. Um, the time is 9 30, going on 9.30, and this is Everything is Pink by Ms. Judy Kang. Y'all can't tell me that track is fire. That's a fire track right there. That is uh, Everything is Pink by Judy Kane. So hot. Oh, my gosh. I love that track. It's craziness. Okay, so the next track is Genesis. Check it out, you guys.
to How We Do It Radio with Ms. Mindful Jordan. That's right, that's right. Keeping you in touch with what's real and hot. Oh, yeah. Every How We Do It Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Already, but that's from South Side of Chicago. And when I'm not rocking your local internet radio station with Shout Radio Worldwide, making a beat or slagging a many path, I'm checking out my girl, Miss Mindful Jordan, on how we do a radio lesson. 